Welcome to the BBB National Programs Podcast Better Series, where we will explore top of mind topics with business and industry leaders to understand the leading trends and innovations that continue to push the envelope in today's marketplace. Thank you for joining us today on the Better Series Podcast. I'm James Lee. And we're going to take a deep dive into one of the Better Business Bureau national programs that helps both businesses and consumers. The BBB Auto Line helps resolve disputes involving something most of us have, an automobile. Joining me to help us learn more about the BBB Auto Line program is Juan Herrera, BBB's National Director of Dispute Resolution Programs. Thanks for coming today. Thank you for having me, James. Looking forward to the conversation. So dispute resolutions, that sounds deceptively simple, which usually means that it's not. (laughs) Tell me uh, more about what the BBB does in the area of dispute resolution in general. Well, the uh, Better Business Bureau's national programs is involved in development and delivery of dispute resolution programs, primarily in the areas of advertising, automotive, data privacy, and telecommunications. So let's drill down a little bit more into the auto portion of that, the auto line program. Why did the BBB decide to get into auto dispute resolution? That sounds like something you'd want to avoid being in, but you guys are very good at it. So how did that happen? Well, this happened back in the late 70s. Uh, The Federal Trade Commission made a decision to use the BBB auto line as part of the GM, General Motors, Federal Trade Commission consent order. To date, uh, over 2 million consumers have been helped through the program. Most of the auto manufacturers participate in our program, making the BBB Auto Line one of the largest and highly regarded DR program in the U.S. The program is administered by the BBB national programs and local participating BBBs across the country. Although we mainly help business and consumers resolve automobile warranty lemon law claims, uh, the program also administers uh, class action settlements, extended service contracts, and disputes concerning certified pre-owned vehicles in a timely and cost-effective manner that complies with all lemon laws and applicable regulations. So tell me a story. What does a typical dispute look like? Well, James, this is a hard question to answer, to be quite truthful with you, uh, since no case is alike, as you, you probably know. Each, each case is unique in its own way, but what's typical is a consumer that is alleging a manufacturing defect and has attempted to resolve the claims uh, following his or her vehicle warranty suggested steps. The program is able to process a a claim for a consumer as long as this allegation is made. Once that happens, then a dispute resolution specialist is assigned to assist both parties by opening the lines of communication between the consumer and the participating auto manufacturers. If mediation does not resolve the matter, then the consumer has the option to seek arbitration as a final step to resolve the claim. So how long does this, this process, again, you know, typical, everything's different, but typically how long would somebody expect to, uh, to work through this process before it's ultimately resolved? Right. The program might, makes it every effort to attempt to resolve the complaints within 40 days. Uh, oh, from that's fast. When the claim is started. Correct. What's the typical outcome? Well, you have options, and the arbitrator has options, I should say. Um, an outcome can typically involve a, a repair to the car, right? The manufacturer is asked to make repairs to the car, uh, replace the car, provide money back to the consumer, a repurchase of the car, or mm-hmm. in a case that can sometimes happen is deny the case. What are the other options that somebody would have if you get, if you get into a dispute like this? Are there other services, or is this really the... The dispute resolution of, of choice. Right. Well, yeah. Well, n- well, not all manufacturers participate in the BBB Auto Line program. Most do. There are a um, few certain companies that have elected other dispute resolution mechanisms uh, to handle their complaints. However, for, for a list of current participating companies, uh, please visit our website at bbb.org slash auto line, and you will see most of the auto companies that you know do participate in, in the program, which is a, a greater number than, than not. So you talked about what you, you cover in this dispute resolution uh, process. Um, what, don't, what don't you cover? What, 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 what's not something that you would want 
or, or can handle in, in this kind of a process. Right. As, as I mentioned earlier, um, one of the things that we are able to to do in a process a claim is if a consumer is alleging a manufacturing defect. However, if a consumer is alleging a sales-related issue, not satisfied with the purchase of the car, or there's a product liability involved, you know, I got into an accident when I was driving at, you know, 100 miles an hour, or, you know, anything other than a warranty defect is something that we will not address through the program as we don't have the uh, the authority to do so. What about if it's if, if it's a repair issue? Uh, so if, if it might have been covered by the warranty, but it wasn't repaired correctly. Is that something that would be? Yes, under? yes. We'll, we, we do get involved with that. And, you know, arbitrators have the option to make determinations, you know, if that happens to be the case and either order the manufacturer to repair it or, you know, worst case, you know, buy it back or replace it with a light car. Let's pretend for a minute that I'm a small business owner and I have some delivery trucks uh, or just delivery, you know, cars, whatever it is. And I, I keep having an issue. Um, and I think I've done all I can do how do I learn if AutoLine can help me? Right. Yeah, well, your first step is to visit our website, uh, bbb.org slash AutoLine, and, and look at our process, right? Um, and then find out whether the auto manufacturer that you, will, the, the, that you drive the car you know, participates in the program. So that would be the first step. Uh, once you're in there, then you can learn more about your state lemon law and also review the applicable program summary, which you know, spells out the, the things that we can and cannot do for that particular situation. And that will also help you determine whether you're eligible to, to participate in our program. Do, do most states have a lemon law, or is that, is that a, it's really you have to go state by state to figure out if you do or not? Well, all states do offer lemon law in the union, except that each state is unique in its own eligibility requirements or, or steps to follow. So at what point in, in my dispute, I, I think I've done everything I can do, but really when is the point I need to contact you to find out if you can help me? Well, if you have attempt, attempted to uh, reach out to the manufacturer and you're still not satisfied with the repairs made to your car and you still have believe that you should, something else should be done for you, then uh, at that point you're welcome to you know, come to our website and you know, file a complaint or contact us at 1-800-955-5100 for additional assistance, and our operators will be happy to help you with filing a claim for you. Is it a sort of a, a difficult paperwork process? What, what do I need to have available to, to prove that I've, I've done what I'm supposed to do? Right. Yeah, what, what we would ask you to do is just to give us your name, your last name, your address, so we can send you the paperwork. Also, we'll ask you to give us the, the vehicle identification number and also the make model, you know, basic information so that we can begin your claim. And it's not difficult at all. Uh, we also have a you know, customer website pre presence that yeah, you're also welcome to utilize on your own 24 hours, seven days a week. Do I need to have any kind of documentation? Do I have to have something that shows that, yes, I contacted my dealer on this date and they did this and then I had to do this? And then it, do you have to have that kind of documentation? Although it's not required, it will be very helpful for anyone, you know, looking at your claim and, you know, making a decision on, on your case. Uh, but, yeah, the answer is no, you don't, but it will, it, it's preferred that you have that. For the information junkies among us. This program, as you said, has been going on for quite a while, and, and what was it, two million um, consumers? Consumers. I mean, that's a that's a big number. What are what are some of the other things that uh, we can look the stats around this program that might be interesting? So right. Well, currently the program is handling approximately seventeen thousand five hundred cases a year. Uh, we have a, a sixty forty percentage resolution. We mediate most cases and arbitrate. Uh, our aim is to try to, you know, open up the lines of communication between the parties so that it becomes a win-win for everyone. Is and that difficult to do? I mean, do, 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 do the, I guess the manufacturer been doing this for a while. So how hard is it to convince the, the consumer that this is in their best interest? Um, well, it's not hard at all. I mean, you know, a consumer who's tried to negotiate or follow the steps required in the warranty booklet is still unsatisfied, I think, reaching out to someone else to aid him or her into arriving to a resolution, I think it's, it's something that a lot of people do want to do when they exhaust every avenue 
possible. It's always good to have somebody to help, right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um, what's the most unusual dispute that you've ever seen? Um, I'd say I, I would just rephrase that question and say that any allegation that is not involved with warranty defects are going to be the allegations or claims that we're not going to be able to process. Product liability, sales, aftermarket items would not be eligible for our program, so we would probably refer you to the state general's office or, um, you know, uh, your attorney, you know, however you wish to handle best. Is, is there a way to avoid a dispute like this? I mean, if your car is broken, your car is broken, but <laughs> is there a way to avoid, you know, having to go through a dispute resolution process and what might that be? Well, if you're an auto manufacturer, I guess my, my one suggestion would be, you know, uh, work with your customer. Right, um, you know, reach out to your customer if you're hearing um, concerns about the, the 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 vehicle's warranty, or talk with your dealership to make sure that your consumers are taken care of. Because ultimately, you are the one responsible for, you know, uh, the case. You know, and take the steps necessary to help out that consumer. If you're a consumer, uh, you know, know that you know we're around, then you know you can file with us at bb.org/autoline. And, you know, we're happy to help you and, you know, assign someone to help you, you know, navigate the process. Um, back to the statistics for just a second. Um, it, 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 it dawns on me that, you know, I'll date myself here. Uh, my very first car that I ever owned was um, a car that leaked oil and had a bad electrical system that I, within the first year that I owned the car, I had to have uh, engine rebuilt, and I had to have the electrical system replaced. Today, cars are so very, very different. They're, you know, far more reliable. You know, a car used to be you know, dead and gone if it was, you know, if it made it to 60, 70,000 miles, I thought, oh, my, that's a great car. You know, cars today go for hundreds of thousands of miles and, and never have a problem. Do the statistics that you have show that cars are more reliable today, or, or do we still see the same sort of issues cropping up, but maybe there's fewer of them, or what, what, what do we see about that, about reliability? You're correct, James. Uh, it seems like uh, today we're seeing less and less issues with the actual mechanics of the car, and with that I mean you know, the transmission, the engine, suspension problems, uh, but what we're seeing more now is the uh, electronics that, you know, now, nowadays cars have, you know, whether it's uh, the navigation system or the, the, the backup camera. A lot of those are issues that, you know, consumers are, you know, bringing to our attention quite often. Um, and I think that's the shift that, that we've seen over the past, you know, few years. So now I'm going to ask you to look into your crystal ball because we're seeing, you know, significant changes in vehicles today with, you know, we're on the verge of autonomous vehicles that are, that are driverless or at least, you know, driver, you know, the computer assists in the driving, electric vehicles where you, again, back to the mechanical issue, that's going to be very different than a, than the traditional internal combustion motor. How do you, how do you think that will affect what you guys are seeing in dispute resolution? Or are, and are you already seeing some of those kinds of issues? That's a very interesting question and, and one that, you know, we are always thinking about. Uh, I think uh, the way in which, you know, the disputes are going to be um, different, I think, are going to be in relation to, as you mentioned, the uh, autonomous cars, is that... Um, it's going to be much harder to determine whether there will be a consumer driving that car, right? I mean, it might be a, an enterprise driving it or a, you know, one of those national rental cars. And maybe those are the ones that own the car and are going to be leasing it to a consumer. So, yeah, that's going to be a very interesting dynamics and one that we're still going to try to, to navigate and explore. Uh, honestly, I don't know the answer quite yet, but what we will know is that you know, we'll be there to help consumers, you know, resolve the disputes as long as, you know, uh, they continue to have issues or they do have issues with their cars. It's always good to have friends. It's always good to have somebody <laughs> to help. Um, well, one, one last time, how does somebody contact AutoLine today to see if you can be helpful to them? Right. Um, I urge, urge people to contact us at 1-800-955-5100. Uh, uh, we have operators uh, on 
on the lines between 9 and 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you'd rather use the website, we also have website presence, which is uh, bbb.org slash autoline. And at any time, you're welcome to look us up and you know file a complaint if you if you would like. Oh, thank you for joining us today. Loved learning all about it, and I hope your crystal ball's right about autonomous vehicles. Uh, so thank you. Thank for, you, James. Uh, and thank you for listening today to the Better Business Bureau National Program's Better Series podcast. You can hear more great episodes on iTunes or your favorite streaming platform. We'll be back soon with another episode to help you grow your business with the latest trends and information. You just enjoyed the Better Series podcast. Be sure to tune in next time for a brand new episode. To learn more about our other shows, visit betterbusiness.blueberry.com. That's betterbusiness.blubrry.com. Follow us on Twitter at BBB underscore NTL programs. Send your comments and ideas to podcast at bbbnp.org. The thoughts and opinions expressed on this podcast are the views and opinions of the guest, not those of the BBB National Programs or its affiliates. This podcast is for information and educational purposes only and is copyrighted with all rights reserved. This podcast is protected by Blueberry's Terms of Service.